Hello there, this is Brian. I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to convert your digital still images into a video clip uh, through Sony Vegas Pro making a uh, time lapse. The first thing you're going to want to do is get your images off of your compact flash card and get them into a uh, program that will edit uh, your raw images. Now I use a, uh, a program called Capture One and I went ahead and shot all my images on um, a Canon 20D in the raw format. You can shoot both in raw or JPEG. I prefer raw because I have the ability to um, manipulate the images after they've been shot where it's JPEG you're pretty limited to what you can do. So here you can see it's loading um, all of my raw images in and I went ahead and done this just to save time and let's take a look at them here. And here they are. Now you can uh, go in and you can do some fine editing in your raw program. I, I think Adobe Photoshop has it, Lightbox has it, uh, th there's several of them out there that uh, you can do this with. And um, But you don't want to do too much editing because you're going to be editing anywhere from several hundred to several thousand images. And if you have a, you know, a time lapse where there's a, a great change in color or what have you, and you need to go in and, and edit individual images, you're going to have a big problem. So here I'm just going to do a quick uh, color correction. And uh, let's go ahead and make this 3000. And minus 5.0. And I like that color a little bit better than what was shot through the camera. So what I'll do is then I'll apply this change to all of my images. So I'll copy that, select all my images, and apply that change. And as you can see, it's applied all of those, all of those changes that I've done. It's uh, went in and color corrected all those images. The next thing you're going to want to do is output your raw images as a JPEG. Now you don't want to um, output it as a TIFF, it would just be a monster file. So go ahead and pick JPEG as your default, no compression, and put it into a folder that you can find. I went ahead and made one here, time lapse tutorial, JPEG, and that's where I'm going to put them in. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll process all these images, which should take, uh, depending on how big uh, your file is, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to several hours to render this out. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll bring it into Sony Vegas Pro. Now that we have all our uh, raw files converted to JPEG, we need to bring them into Sony Vegas. And as you can see here in my time lapse tutorial, here's my JPEG, and here are all my images. Now, by default, if you were to drag this into the timeline, uh, it'll make it five seconds long. Obviously, that won't work because we want um, 30 frames a second. Well, there is a trick to that, and I'll show you how to do that, so let's go ahead and delete this track. Let's go up to Options, Preference, Editing, under New Still Length, Image Length, let's go ahead and make that 0.020 and click apply and then OK and now we'll have 30 frames a second so let's go ahead and select all of our images and let's drag them into the timeline and here we are now we have uh, all of our images dropped in the timeline and uh, it works out to 30 frames a second uh, the problem with this is though is we have all these individual still images sitting on our uh, timeline and we really can't do anything to to them to edit them. I can't lengthen them, I can't shorten it, I can't do anything. So what we need to do is first of all let's go up to project properties and up here you want to get into the match media settings and you want to pick uh, the actual image that uh, you've created 
and this image size is uh, 3504 by 2336 uh, progressive 29 frames a second very good let's click and apply that now you can see over here in our preview that it's changed you can see what the size is but uh, what's interesting is is it went from a widescreen format now to a 4.3 format, which is what the images were shot in. So what we'll need to do now is we need to get this into a 16 by 9 format, and I can't do that with all these images sitting here. So what I want to do is I want to save these all these images as a veggie file. So go up here to your save as, and let's go ahead and save this as time lapse tutorial Oops. and let's go ahead and save that all right so let's go ahead and uh, start a new project find our time-lapse tutorial veggie file that uh, veggie that we just saved and here it is right here so now that we found our uh, veggie file let's go ahead now there's there's a couple really neat things you can do with veggie files if you double click on it it'll go ahead and put the file that you just saved back down in the timeline exactly the way you saved it this is great because if you've forgotten to do something you can go back in and you can edit these files individually if you need to uh, so nothing has been destroyed and the other cool thing about the veggie file and this is what really makes it powerful is now we can drag it down into the timeline. Now it's taken all those individual clips and it's made it one continuous video. This is great because now I can edit just that, that this particular video, this particular clip, without having to edit each one of those individual clips. Now uh, with this as one piece, I can now either lengthen it or shorten it any way I want to. The other thing that I can do is I need to change the aspect ratio of this. And the way we do this is we click on the event pan and crop. And here you can see it's still in the 4.3 format. And you can see the size of the image width 3504 by height 2336. It's a huge file. Uh, there's a lot of information here and it gives us a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, image to work with without really degrading the image quality. So I want to go up here to the presets and click 16 by 9 widescreen. Now you're going to see that we're going to lose some information at the top and the bottom, which is fine um, because we don't really care. Uh, let's go ahead and redo this because I want to do this at the beginning of the, of the uh, video so I can show you something. Let's do 16 by 9 again. Um, as you can see, we're still in the 3504 for width, but it's changed the height. And that's fine because uh, we still have a lot of image to work with. Now, what I want to do is, is I actually want to zoom out as this video clip plays. And the way we do this is I'm going to take, and just to show you the size um, that we have to work with, this is actually the 1280 by 720 p format and you can see just how small that is and this is how big the image is and this is how much information we actually get to work with. So I'm going to take and I'm going to drag this up here into the corner and I'll resize it here a little bit. Now uh, what's nice about the event pan and crop tool is, is I can actually zoom in, zoom out, pan left to right, right to left, whatever I want to do. The trick though is, is to make sure that you know wherever you want this to start in your video clip that you go ahead and set this up make your keyframe and then wherever you want it to stop let's go ahead and move this to the end of the clip here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna zoom this all the way out to here now as the video clip plays we'll actually get a nice slow zoom out uh, while this is playing and I haven't lost any information uh, no no degradation of the image whatsoever because we have such a large file that we're working with so let's go ahead and see what that looks like go to the beginning of the clip here and as we move through the clip and we look at the preview you can see as it pans out 
as it zooms out. Very nice. Let's go ahead and go up here to properties and I want to change this to what I'm going to be outputting it to. Um, whoops. Uh, let's see here. I want to output this to 720 30p. This is what I'm going to output it to um, for YouTube. So let's go ahead and apply that. And now we're actually in the the aspect ratio that we're going to be outputting it to. And I got my zoom out that I like. Very nice. The other things that you can do with this is um, you can change, like I showed you earlier, you can actually change the length of the clip. And I want to change this to, to play at 24p. I want it to slow down a little bit. And the way you do that is, is move your cursor over the end of the, the uh, clip, press your control key, and drag it out for however, uh, in, until you get the, the length that you want. Or you can go into properties and you can look here and at the playback rate, I want it to be at 800. And that's what gets me to uh, 24 frames per second. And I'll just keep doing this until I get it the way I like it. So now you can see I have it at 800 and that makes it uh, 24. This will actually is, is in a 24 frames Per second but it's actually going to be rendered out at 30 frames per second so that will actually slow the video down a little bit but because of the way that the the video was recorded in the time lapse it's still going to play fairly fast this will just give it a little bit smoother uh, playback uh, you can do a whole bunch of things you can color correct you can sharpen add a, a beginning title and end credit add music and I'm going to do all that and I'll play that at the end of this video but I want to show you how you render this out. So now that you have all your, your editing done and you're happy with that, go up to Render As. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick um, MP4, Sony, AVC, MP4. And let's go into Customs. And I want it to be 1280 by 720p and 29.970 or 30 frames a second, progressive scan, uh, pixel aspect ratio, I want it to be square, and then the bit rate, that, you know, depending on the video, um, you know, there's quite a few settings and you can even do custom settings. YouTube still compresses the video quite a bit, so I try and keep the bit rate up a little bit higher, but I don't crank it all the way up to 20, you'll never see the difference. So I, I'll leave it at 10 million. Audio, of course, system, project. Now I have my video rendering quality at best. If you're on a slower computer, uh, you can pick good preview and it just uh, helps your, your computer render it uh, a little bit better. But because uh, I, I have such a powerful computer, I can select best and it's gonna use all of the resources to uh, render this video out. Click OK, name it time lapse tutorial and let's go ahead and click save and as you can see I already made one earlier and we'll just go ahead and write over it and then you can see it's going to go ahead and render this out so hopefully uh, this gave you some uh, quick and dirty information on how you can do a uh, digital still time-lapse video in Sony Vegas Pro. I just touched on on some of the things There's so much more you can do, but this uh, will at least get you get your images off the camera and Into Sony so you can start playing with it. It's a it's a really fascinating hobby um, It's it's very boring and time-consuming and tedious to, to make the actual uh, time-lapse while you're standing out in the field for hours on end, but it's very rewarding once you see it play um, uh, after you're done. It's, it's really kind of cool. So um, hopefully this gave you enough information to get things going. There's some good websites out there. Uh, if, you're, if you're into time lapse or you've never done it before and you want some information, I think there's one called Timescapes and there's a great forum board there that you can read about how to do time lapse photography. 
Uh, Philip Bloom is another one. He's uh, quite the uh, the innovator or the leader in this new revolution of these uh, digital cameras that can do motion picture and he does quite a bit of time lapse and he has several tutorials over there. He's a big Mac user and he uses Final Cut Pro and uh, QuickTime Pro. So, uh, and I'll have those uh, down in the description. So, um, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.